day 370 of the Trump administration, and we have new developments from the White House itself on the Russia investigation. First, President Trump is airborne en route to Davos, Switzerland right now on board Air Force One. Before departing the White House late today, he walked out of his chief of staff's office and right into the pool of journalists who cover the White House. The only photo of it is this one from a White House staffer. There was no video of it because there were no cameras ready for the event. We do have audio of the president who tonight declared himself ready and willing, if not eager, to speak with Robert Mueller under oath. Are you going to talk to Mueller? I'm looking forward to it, actually. You want to? Do you have a date yeah, set? Here's the story, just so you understand. Set, There's been President? no collusion whatsoever. Yeah. There's no obstruction whatsoever. And I'm looking forward to it. Do you have I, a date set, Mr. Hunter? I, I don't know, no. I th guess they're talking about two or three weeks, but I would love to do it. Would you do In it person? Under you know, again, it's, I have to say, subject to my lawyers and all of that, but I would love would to do it. Would you do it under oath, Mr. President? You mean like Hillary did it? Did Hillary do it under oath? She didn't do it under oath, but I would do it under oath. Listen, but I would do it, and you know she didn't do it under oath, right? She would do it under oath. If you didn't do it, if you didn't know about Hillary, then you're not much of a reporter. I think to reach a higher standard, you would do it under oath. Oh, I would do it under oath, yeah, absolutely. No, I would do it. Do you think Robert Mueller will be fair to you in this larger investigation? We're going to find out. Are you, are you concerned about it? Because here's what we'll say, and everybody says, no collusion. There's no collusion. What is now they're saying, oh, well, did he fight back? But you what fight back. Is that, what is collusion? Sir, what is you, fight back. you fight back, John. You fight back. Oh, it's obstruction. Yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, I hope so. Not long after that, the president's attorney walked those comments back a bit. Trump attorney Ty Cobb told our own Kristen Welker that the president was, quote, speaking to reporters hurriedly and that the terms of an interview are still being negotiated by Mr. Trump's personal lawyers with Mueller's staff. The president's comments come one day after reports that Mueller was indeed pursuing an interview with Trump and that Mueller's team has already spoken to Attorney General Jeff Sessions and fired FBI Director James Comey, among others. But just two weeks ago, the president publicly expressed his reservations about testifying before special counsel Mueller. And certainly I'll see what happens, but uh, when they have no collusion and nobody's found any collusion at any level, uh, it seems unlikely that you'd even have an interview. No collusion. We've heard the president mention that a time or two. He did again tonight. The question of collusion came up earlier today at the White House briefing. The president has said repeatedly there was no collusion between the campaign and Russia. Can you define what he means when he says collusion? Is he talking about meetings between officials? Is he talking about information exchanging hands? What does that Look, mean? I think the accusation against the president is that he had help winning the election, and that's simply untrue. Does he think that the reporting from the uh, intelligence community saying that there was hacking that went on um, done by Russia, does he, he, does, he rejects that? No, he, he, he's addressed that, but that doesn't mean that he participated in it. Uh, I, I think those are very different things. Stating the existence of something happening is very different than having helped make it happen. And you can't conflate the two. And I think himself? oftentimes that's what individuals are trying to do. Right. Does he mean that about himself or about campaign officials? When he says collusion between the campaign, does he mean himself or does he mean that no one on his campaign could have done anything. Uh, look, I think he's stating for himself and to anything that he would be a part of or know about uh, or have sanctioned, but that would be something um, that, again, I think he's very clearly laid out. He and his campaign had nothing to do with. The questioning there by Maggie Haberman of the New York Times. Well, tonight the president was asked about how he defines collusion. You're going to define it for me, okay? But I can tell you, there's no collusion. I couldn't have cared less about Russians having to do with my campaign. The fact is, you people won't say this, but I'll say it. I was a much better candidate than her. You always say she was a bad candidate. You never say I was a good candidate. I was one of the greatest candidates. Nobody else would have beaten the Clinton machine, as crooked as it was. But I was a great candidate. Someday you're going to say that. Goodbye, everybody. Thank 
We also have new developments tonight relating to Michael Flynn, the former Trump national security advisor who pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI about his conversations with Russians and who is now cooperating with the home team with Robert Mueller. NBC News reports that a year ago today, Flynn met with FBI investigators in the West Wing without a lawyer present and that notably he didn't tell the president or top White House officials about it. The White House actually learned about that meeting two days later from from then acting attorney general Sally Yates, the very same official who warned the White House about Flynn being a possible blackmail target. Yates has also cooperated with the special counsel. NBC News also reporting that CIA director Mike Pompeo, who the president allegedly asked to lean on former FBI director Comey to drop his inquiry into Michael Flynn, he has also spoken to the Mueller team. And we're learning more that Steve Bannon, the former White House chief strategist who recently had a spectacular fallout with President Trump, is expected to talk to the special counsel's investigators by the end of this month. So a lot to talk about on a Wednesday night as we turn to our lead-off panel. Michael Crowley, national security editor and senior correspondent for Politico. Mika Oyang, an attorney and former staffer at House Intelligence and Armed Services. And Jack Sharman's back with us, former special counsel for the House Banking Committee, now the Financial Services Committee. That was during the Whitewater investigation. These days he's a criminal defense attorney. Uh, welcome to you all. Uh, Michael Crowley, in addition to his continuing to be haunted by the woman who will never be president. Did the president tonight in these off the cuff remarks blow up any part of his legal strategy? Well, Brian, I think it might be PR strategy as much as legal strategy here. I think that the question of testifying under oath really is a distinction without a difference. It is a felony to lie to the FBI. It doesn't matter where you do it whether or not you are under oath or not. So if Trump were to meet with Robert Mueller in the Oval Office uh, or somewhere in the White House and to lie to him, whether or not there's an oath, that's a felony. Same goes for Mueller associates, FBI agents. You can't do it. What I think is going on, maybe, uh, in the uh, reaction of uh, Trump's lawyer, Ty Cobb, uh, who seems to be doing some cleanup, who seems to be saying... Well, the president was uh, speaking off the cuff and we're still going to negotiate this. I, I think the problem might be that when Trump says he would testify under oath, you testify under oath typically before a grand jury. And so to the degree Trump implied he would go before a grand jury, I think that's primarily a PR problem. It just looks and sounds worse that if you're testifying before a grand jury, it has this ring of criminality. Of course, nothing uh, to do with Trump's interactions with Mueller looks good. But I think that if I were Trump's uh, lawyer and PR team, I would be saying, talk to Mueller, try to make it seem as informal as possible, try to make it seem like you're just having a conversation. A grand jury suggests a kind of a criminal proceeding in a way that we want to avoid. So I, I suspect, Ryan, they might be concerned about that, but I don't feel distinction here. So, Jack, you've got the president in a doorway speaking off the cuff for, let's call it, 15 minutes. If just that caused his attorney, Ty Cobb, to walk back his impromptu comments, how is this guy going to do sitting across from Robert Mueller? Well, clearly, in some ways, this might be a, a challenging client. Uh, this is a, would be a client that thinks very strongly uh, and feels very strongly about what uh, is right and wants to uh, tell his story and tell it with vigor. Um, there's always a danger, though, uh, whether sworn or unsworn, that if the prosecutors and the agents believe someone else and believes their story more uh, forcefully, that that could be a, uh, a legal as well as a political problem. Uh, Mika, Jack may be a master of understatement, referring to the president as a challenging cl uh, client. Remind our viewers, given all we know about the people who've gone before him, the people who have already talked to Mueller, just how detailed a case Mueller's going to sit down with, just how detailed a stack of questions are going to come at this uh, client. Yeah, Mueller's talked to multiple people in a lot of the conversations that the president would get asked about, and so he's got all kinds of facts against which he can check the president's testimony. 
The thing to remember about this president is he's an unreliable narrator about his own activities and the facts surrounding that. He keeps saying that his crowds were larger. He keeps going back and forth about his own participation in Access Hollywood tape, which he admitted to. But in front of Mueller, those inconsistencies have real legal consequences, and Mueller will be able to check those inconsistencies against the transcripts of other cabinet officials. He may even have telephone records, other witnesses to the Trump Tower meeting, all kinds of things. So Trump really has to tell the truth if he can remember what that is. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.